Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And uh, this week, joining us from Auckland in New Zealand is Inderdeep Vreich. Hi, Inderdeep. Welcome to the show. Hey, Vasco. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. So Inderdeep is an Agile coach and a Scrum Master based in New Zealand, and she has been working in Agile space with IT teams since 2007. She believes in lifelong learning and derives deep satisfaction from working with teams and individuals and see them grow in their journey. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about many different journeys here this week. So Inderdeep, take a minute, tell us a little bit more about yourself and how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master? I started in the software development industry and around about like 2005. and 2007, I got an opportunity to work with an agile team. And this team was a remote team. So part of the team was based in New Zealand and the other was in India. So I was at that time, I was based in India and I had been working with my team in New Zealand before that. So I got a chance to work with them and I had, at that time, I didn't have any experience about Agile. And when I got to know how it works and, you know, it wasn't, it was a very beginning like of my Agile journey and I just loved it. And after that, I worked in other IT organizations and Agile has always been my like methodology in which I worked in. And I worked in as a developer in a team and then I was in a QA space, then I became a test manager, and then I was a team lead. And as a team member, sometimes you feel like there are things which are not working as it should work in Agile. It's such a beautiful thing, Agile. Like It can really empower people and get good out of the people. But because I wasn't empowered enough to take to the next level. So I thought, oh, maybe I should, you know, uh, I did Scrum Master certification, then I became an Agile coach. And I was just learning as I went on my journey. And then I was like, okay, so then I got this opportunity to work as a Scrum Master. And then previous teams, I was, I didn't have the designation as a Scrum Master, but I was kind of operating as a scrum master you know in many teams there's kind of a rolling scrum master like you work as a scrum master for certain days and you know then another one comes so that's how it was and when I got this opportunity to work as a scrum master with this team I just jumped on that I said oh my god now this is the opportunity and you know yeah that's actually very common for people who who end up taking like this kind of positions like uh, scrum master or, or even like team lead or even project manager, right? Like you have this firsthand experience and you see how powerful it could be, but you're then frustrated by some of the details of, of the organization or the teams you're working within. And then you take the plunge, right? You, yes. You take responsibility into your own hands yes. and try to make something different. So Inderdeep, and uh, of course, today's Monday, it's fail Monday. So we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, what might be a story where you as a Scrum Master tried your best but at that time your journey was still still had many miles ahead and you were not going to be able to overcome that and and we share these stories of failure because of course we want to learn from those and and take lessons and tips and ideas that we can apply in our own work so Inderdeep tell us that story like walk us through the steps of how that story started from the very beginning you know what were the team members saying to each other what were you telling them what were they telling you and uh, how it ended up tell us that story right so this was a very early days when I got an opportunity to be the scrum master in the team and I wanted to change many things in the organization or within the team and I think what I did, I just jumped on that too quickly. And I could see when I made some changes and thought, okay, this is the right way to go. And I talked to the team and I said, okay, this is how we are going to do. And, you know, I was, I think it was too early for me to kind of jump into that state where, so I didn't take my time to observe where the team was, like at what level of the journey they were at. So I tried to impose my own, you know, way of working without 
taking my team on with me. And probably we were like at a different level. My, so I had some assumptions in my mind, like this is how it should be. And this is how my team is going to respond to what changes I'm making. Tell us a little bit more about that. Like, uh, what were the things that you were seeing as a Scrum Master that they were not seeing as a team? Just for example, you know, the, uh, when we are uh, doing, let's say, for example, a refinement session. And in the refinement, uh, you know, I was trying to persuade the team to one direction. Like, you know, if they are trying to talk about some, let's say, for a story, they want to discuss it more. And because I want to move on, so I would interrupt them in between for not giving them enough chance to, you know, understand the requirements because I was like trying to time box things. So it was like, in my mind, I was like, okay, we need to get through these many tickets and the refinements. So we should be kind of moving fast. So I would be kind of an impediment for them to discuss the whole or understanding the full requirements. So I was trying to jump too early in between. So it was like I was being a blocker in that point. Like I didn't realize at that time because I was trying to do the best for the team. But saying that, so it was like my initial days and, you know, I was trying to do my best, but I didn't understand how it can impact. So, you know, and then I was like, even, you know, if people are saying, okay, I think uh, we need more time for this one. And then I would try to hurry them up. Like, you know, even in the stand up, if they want to, in the, you know, daily scrum, if they want to discuss something. Was it a little bit like you felt that the change was yours? Like, you know, this is my change. I want this to happen. Is that how you felt at the time? Yes, because I had a certain set of assumptions and presumptions in my mind. This is how it should work. And probably, you know, at that time, you know, when I think within like a few weeks of the time and I was expecting some change in the team, how my team is going to respond. But I didn't see that change coming in. And then I had to kind of, you know, as we introspect or reflect on ourselves. And then I was trying to figure out what was happening there. So there was a big, you know, I didn't see any change probably within a month or four weeks time. And I was seeing no change. And I was quite, you know, disheartened because I was thinking that it's going to work, but it wasn't working. So then I had to kind of reflect on myself or my behavior. And uh, I realized that whenever you enter into a system or a new organization, you should take time to observe the system and just see how people are working together and what are the challenges they are facing and what is not working uh, when they work together. So it's like, That was a big learning curve for me, but, you know, and I would say that was my biggest failure. And I'm I'm very glad that happened in the very beginning because, you know, from there, and I would just jump into anything. And as a scrum master, you don't have to kind of get the answer for everything. You don't have to answer everything, right? So you have to take the team on the journey and let them self-organize and find the answers for their problems, right? So that was... What uh, one thing I took from that failure I had? Yeah, I, I was just thinking as you were telling the story that one of the problems with change, and we'll talk more about this on the Wednesday episode, but one of the problems with change is where is it coming from, right? Because if the team wants to change, they can change, and, and it's probably going to happen very quickly. But if we as Scrum Masters come from the outside, even if we have been there for a while, we are still not the team, right? And uh, if we come from the outside perspective and kind of push our uh, ideas of what needs to change, sometimes having even the different set of assumptions to start from, as you pointed to, then of course the team is not going to be happy about it. They don't see the reason why. They don't understand how the change will help them. And it's much easier for them to say, no, thanks, but no thanks. Like, let's continue as we were because we don't see a reason to do any changes right now. Yeah, so you have to build a trust first. If you're coming from outside, you have to build that trust within the team that, yes, you are working with them rather than, you know, you're trying to control them as the normal in many organizations. It's kind of 
control and command culture where you know people see themselves and uh if as a scrum master you come to the team and you are just having the same behavior then team says okay we are happy where we are we don't want to go with you so it's kind of as a scrum master so you have to build a trust first uh, which is so important and one of the the best ways to build that trust is to actually listen. Yes. The team will find things they want to change. We don't need to start with the things we want to change. And by supporting yes. them and by helping them, we are effectively creating that trust. We are working to create loyalty and reciprocity, right? You help me, I help you. And if we come in as Scrum Masters and help the team, they are much more likely to then support our ideas or at least consider them. Yes, 100%. There's no argument about that. Because, you know, if as a scrum master, your role is to make the team effective, right? So the effectiveness of the team is your responsibility as a scrum master. So what does the effectiveness mean? Like, it's like how the team can perform to their fullest capacity if you're not listening to them. And you're just trying to say, this is the change I want. I don't know what you want. So it's like, you have to listen to me because I want, this is how we should work, right? So then there won't be like, people will say, no, 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 we are, we are not going with you. So what I learned from this is you have to take a step back and not to say something, right? So just take a breather and just let the team say what they want to do, right? And then take the step forward and take them along with you in the journey. Absolutely. That's a great lesson learned. Thank you for sharing that with us, Inderdeep. Thank you, Vasco. Thanks for having me. Monday is about what we learn from our obstacles and our failures. But tomorrow is Team Tuesday here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. We explore teams and their journeys, the habits they develop that threaten their performance, how each of our guests help their teams evolve, and the one key lesson they learned from that experience. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. 